Are these stats significant? That is, is it, is it too early along to make judgments based on on the sex of the individual getting the disease or not? Or should we pay attention to all this stuff? Oh, you always have to pay attention, even if it's relatively early. Men do die more frequently than women. The question is why? And there's two possibilities. One is without question, especially in China, as a vast number of men who smoke and very few women who smoke. It just wasn't socially acceptable. There's a similar but less uh, uh, strong trend in Italy. And the other possibility is men have more cardiovascular disease than women. That's not the case normally. Women catch up with men. But it's possible that men generally have more blocked arteries. And that seems to be one of the main ways people die. Now, this doesn't comment on who gets sick or who goes to an ICU. It's just about who dies. And men just don't seem to be able to handle it as well. Doctor, there's one statistic that is is glaring, and that is that the mortality rate in the United States for this disease is about 1.3 percent. And of course, a lot of that 1.3 percent are people with preconditions. Uh, the mortality rate in Italy is over 8 percent. That's a huge differential. Why? In Italy, when you go to the hospital today, and you are sick, they're gonna triage you based on what they have available. Do they have a doctor or nurse? Do they have equipment to manage you? Do they have enough ventilators? And the horror stories we've been hearing from frontline medical personnel in Italy is, is the reality that they have to say, you get to live, you get to die, and we're gonna flip a coin. That has not happened in this country. All the efforts made to date, from the president down to local mayors implementing policies are to prevent an overwhelming barrage, a tsunami of patients heading into our healthcare system. And the two states most at risk, New York and Los and, uh, and California, have shut down primarily for that fear. But so far, and I'm at New York Presbyterian here in New York City, although it is really busy, we have hundreds of patients, we haven't quite overwhelmed the system. As long as we have enough equipment, we can keep going. And doctor, if you listen to the media, you could hear the shouting of questions when the president was giving his press talk today. Uh, you would get the idea that we're essentially where Italy is, that we have the same lack of resources and equipment that Italy does, the same lack of beds that Italy does. Uh, that's just not true, is it? It's not true today. The, the whole goal of the, 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 the social distancing and the the uh, ongoing and, and, and effective move by the American people to mobilize and to, 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 to be able to, to change the way we deal with each other is to prevent that reality. But I tell you what caught me more about the press conference. There's actually pretty big news today about, and it actually came out a paper that came out yesterday, but it was being discussed, but didn't seem to get the attention that I thought it would, which is this paper from France showing yes. that a use of an old drug a malaria drug together with a Z-Pak seems to right. dramatically impact on this virus. And that could be the biggest game changer of all that could alter whether we could ever become Italy. I hope you were going to pronounce it, but I'll try hydroxychloroquine. Is that right? That's very well done. Yes, okay. hydroxychloroquine. <laughs> but the, po the, the, point is, the point is, is that the, uh, I, I don't mean to harp on the media because they're important medical issues, but the media was trying to develop a fight between the president and Dr. Fauci on this. And Dr. Fauci had to come up and say, look, we don't have a fight. We're pretty much in agreement. The president has an opinion that he is optimistic about this. I am a little more laid back in terms of whether I'm optimistic or pessimistic, but we both agree on the essentials. Uh, are you with the president in, in feeling optimistic about the results of this? I'm optimistic. I actually think Dr. Fauci is too, but he's a very disciplined leader. Yes. He's a wonderful scientist. I know him personally. He's doing what a good scientist would do, which is to say, hey, listen, we've got one study. He knows, as well as anybody, that there was earlier evidence from China and other countries where this has been used but never studied. What he's saying is we need to actually do the real uh, study that we would trust, where you get patients and you randomize them the way we do it right. But that yes. would take a long time. And I'm pretty sure the council is going to say, for now, since there's not a lot of downside from repurposing these medications, let's let physicians use it for the highest risk populations. But I'll give you the biggest fact of all. In this study, they shortened the amount of time that patients excreted the virus to six days. The norm is approaching 20 days. That completely changes the behavior of the virus, which means it may actually be more like a flu virus and its impact on us. Yeah. So still dangerous, but not as contagious. And that allows us a lot more freedom 
to, to manipulate how it behaves in our population. By the way, one of the ways in which the president has has uh, really stimulated the economy enormously over the past three years is by cutting red tape, by getting rid of a lot of needless regulations. Now, we we got to be careful with the FDA and, and other organizations that protect our health uh, as with regard to new medicines and everything. Are are we cutting any corners that would that would make things more risky for people, or are we doing exactly the right thing in trying to get these medicines to the pharmacist? If you allow these medications to be prescribed on purpose for COVID-19, then you're cutting a corner, because we haven't studied it well enough, and normally the FDA appropriately would say, hold on, guys. But I think everyone appreciates these are not normal times. And if a drug that's already been on the market for 65 years could be effective with treating a new virus, Yes, there's some potential side effects. There are eye problems that sometimes arise. We, we know those. We use this drug commonly. But I think it's worth the chance. Absolutely. And we should be doing the study starting today, literally today. Yeah. And we'll know, pretty, we'll know in six days. In the meantime, I, I suspect the task force is going to liberalize use of these medications. We just have to have sure yes. enough of it. And the doctor, by the way, Dr. Fauci agreed with you that, in fact, this drug has been tested so long over time and the, and the the negative effects are so de minimis that it is time to uh, to really try it out in in force. Dr. Oz, great to see you again. Thank you very much for being here. Appreciate it. Coming up next.